Uh, what's up? Oh, it's uh, been a busy, busy, busy week so far. It has been a busy. It has been a busy week. Yeah, since from last week. Yeah. Uh, first, congratulations again. Very. Uh, I don't know how to. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not saying nothing because we've just said congratulations and left it at that. <laughs> I wish. I wish I would have took Henry. I was like, I think I'm gonna take him. I was like, no. And I seen. Yeah. 90 freaking yards, 89 yards. So I took, uh, I didn't go back and look at my scores. I looked at them during the game and then I didn't go back and look later. I, uh, let's fix my light here. There, I'm better there. Yeah. All right. Um, I, di- I didn't take Tannehill. I thought about taking Tannehill because I thought one of those two would go, go well. I mean, Tannehill. he went, he, he had almost 30 points. He had four touchdowns and 350 plus yards. Dude. And Henry had a uh, uh, 200 plus and two touchdowns. It's the first time ever a team's had a 350 plus quarterback and a 200 plus running back. Well, uh, hang on, me and Hoke doing our. Uh, I I just. They're – dude, I just think they have the – we were talking today who are the – who are the, you know, the top five teams, and I was going to go. I went Steelers, Tampa Bay, uh, Chiefs, Packers, Titans, if I had to pick the top five right now. Not in that order, but – Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, you said the Seattle? ain't the Cowboys. Ah, Seattle, they're six. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my top six. If I had to I mean, take one, if I had to keep it at five, I'd take Tampa out and put Seattle in. Well, I would take. Bay. I might take Green Bay out and then leave the rest in. True, I, I can see both. I can see both. So, both. but y'all are playing good, man. I mean, the, the 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 thing about it is, is we got quite a few guys out, so they're going to get healthier. That we lost the left tackle, but like, everybody else is about to come back. Are coming back, so we should be even better as the season goes. I thought we'd be a twelve-win team. Well, um, yeah, I remember you saying that. So uh, I just didn't know we'd do it in this fashion. I thought I didn't know we would eat by every game, <laughs> except the Buffalo game. Well, I take. I'm telling you right now. I think that uh, you're. I, it's kind of like remember, like last year coming into it. <coughs> It's like you're, they're coming into it earlier. Yeah. You know, and Jehona Hona, Jehovah Witness uh, Smith, the tight end. Johnny. Dude, I'm, I'm going to have to say better than – I wouldn't say better than Delaney Walker, younger and more productive. Well, you know, Delaney was hurt the last few years. And Delaney's prime with us. Johnny's got ways to go, but – He's definitely – it shows that he can be there. He got hurt. My question is – He did, yeah. He got hurt this past game. He didn't finish. I think he'll be back, but he didn't finish that game. But anyway, the question to me now is, Cowboys, now there's rumbles. The players are saying – I saw on Twitter today, the players are saying this. these coaches don't know what they're doing. They don't they, – there's, there's no plan. That, that These coaches are, have got no plan. and So the players are starting to chirp a little bit. That's going to be uh, – it. they're falling downhill, buddy, after watching that. That was uh, – I mean, I know it was their, Arizona's getting good. I, I Granted, but, I mean, they should not have just mopped the floor of them like that. Well, they couldn't stop Murray. And once that opened up – And Zeke uh, just fumbling – I mean, fumbling twice in a row or two drives in a row or whatever it was, something like that. Dude, after getting the ball. Hey, in the first eight touches, he fumbled twice. Uh, I don't know how you fix the Cowboys. I mean, I'm not trying to sound – I'm not trying to sound tacky, but I don't think the Cowboys get fixed until Jerry Jones dies. I th- I think it's just going to be this over and over and over again like it's been until he's died. And when he dies and gets out of the way, somebody can come in there and really know what to do it and make it Yeah, right. but who is that? No, I mean, some GM they would hire or something like that. I mean – yeah, he's got too much. He's got too much. He's got too much involvement. 
I just not. It, it's never. They're never going to win the Super Bowl. Though it'd be just like it's been for twenty years or whatever it's been. Get good a little bit, go bad. Get good a little bit, go bad. It's until he's dead and gone. It's just might as well just settle in. That's what it is. Did Dak getting hurt throw their? I mean, they wasn't playing good, but you know what I mean. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, somebody tweeted. I, I watch Twitter the most, through most football games. You get the the best play. Twitter, I think, is horrible for everything else. But when you're watching a football game, it's the best because everything <laughs> is live kind of feedback and stuff. Yeah. And somebody made the comment that Andy do Andy Dalton's doing his best to make sure Dak gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was, like, watching some of it last night, and I'm like, I just – it's horrible. I'm like, it. it is like he couldn't do nothing. Like, he just – I mean, he was making $14 million a year at Cincinnati. I, and their team wasn't great, and he still played good. Well, I mean, he's got receivers. He's got – Yeah, dang, receivers are running back. He got a, a little bit of a line. I know the defense is horrible, but, God, dang. Well, the defense wasn't this horrible last year. No, they sure were not. But they are lose. now. I know they lost Van and Asher. I don't know they said he's back. He was play played last night. All right. Well, that's no excuse. I, I don't know. I think that coaching staff. Is, it has to be is not adequate. It has to be because he didn't. He didn't. I mean, it it was not good. I mean, All right. So bring back the clapper. Bring back the clapper. All right. Ha- where are you? Chris is watching Fargo. I only got – I watched the first two. That means I'm five, three behind, right? Yeah, because three, I Chris, watched is, two. Chris is watching it now. Uh, hang on. Get me my – I had to send this. I can't say the word. Uh, I can't cuss, but Chris Rock is good. He's good. Where did I leave off? It was, I think I watched the first two episodes. And that crazy nurse. Maybe I watched three. I can't remember. If you watch three, then you watch the car scene. And I told you you'd like that scene when she came out singing the gospel to him and doing uh, using her hand to pleasure him. No, that, that's supposed to be. I've only watched two. Then uh, you watch two. I think at the end of two, the crazy nurse takes on the fly. Yeah, there you go. That's, so that's, what, right. that's the last thing I saw. I think was that. Okay, it's that's getting right. good. Last night, well, I watched it last night because I taped it Sunday. Last night, it's getting ready to set off. Just like in all of them, when they start going downhill, everything starts happening. This yeah. is that that moment. So leading into that, yeah. <clears throat> We were up to page 30-something, can't remember. Yeah. And I sent you the part the last time we talked about Roy, where he was at. Uh, and you were like, look, dude, it's not time for that. Yeah, you, Ex- you explain to You want some sort them. of emotional scene for Roy. And I was like, no. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, explain why. We didn't need it at this point. I mean, because if we're going 90 pages, I'm a third in. Why? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you don't have an emotional payoff a third of the way through a movie. So, I mean, a third of the way, you know, even halfway through a movie, you know, that's that's a, towards the end thing. He has to have an emotional payoff before he goes and has, has that reckoning and kills everybody in the line of stretch. Right. If he has it now... Like then, where do you go? It's just more, just more, more killing and stuff, and you don't leave yourself anything. That there's no to wrap up. You know, it'd be like a movie where I don't know. I'm trying to think of an analogy. I mean, you can't start Star Wars with you know Luke killing the Emperor in the first half of the first movie. I mean, it's like, then what the what the hell you do with it? Well, that'd be yeah. like the first thirty pages. It's already you know his sister and you didn't know that you know what i mean yeah yeah so, yeah and you're like what the hell is this and it's and then the rest of it's just so you gotta have like you gotta you gotta build 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 and then and then you're gonna pay off and so what 
I was struggling. Like I didn't know where to go. And then when you said, just write it and we'll come back and fill that in. Now I'm back on track. Cause I, here's a better analogy. Let me try this analogy first for you, for you on that. Don't, don't, don't lose that thought. Okay. You ever, and it's happened to all of us. This is, this has happened to all of us. You meet somebody, either acquaintance, a new friend or something. And, Maybe it's a date, whatever. It doesn't matter. It has to be a date, anything. You met somebody new, and you're talking to them, and you're you're doing normal conversations, and then out of nowhere, they spill their guts about, "Hey, my dad abused me. Hey, uh, you know, my yeah, cheating on me. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I've got a problem with drugs." And you're like, "The hell? We just met each other. <laughs> we told you this." Kid? I, I, that that's is, that's that what is. it's like when you get too too emotional too quick in a movie. Yeah, because I I mean that that was a way better analogy. It makes more sense because it a it it would be like somebody watching it going, "God damn, well now we know everything that's happened. What's All left right, to uh, do?" Yeah, you you got to earn it. You got to like earn it. You got to develop a, a, a relationship and lay it lay out the story. It's the best the best now that I can think of is you know that was actually really was, I know you you're that guy. You got a little bit of that preacher and you. You've had I've seen it my own eyes in the studio or whatever. Oh, when they come no and talk doubt. to you and they're pouring their guts out. Well, if you just met them and they're doing that, you'd be like, "What in the hell psychotic mess am I dealing with?" Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, that that also helps because now it allows. I don't have to try to do anything with Roy. I don't have to try to fix him. I ain't got to do nothing. Right, and good. I can keep him on that path. And now he can have, he can always have that memory of what I was going to do is I was going to do this. After you said that I was going to have, I was going to have Roy after that last kill be sitting at the mobile home that we'll see the lake house. I was going to have him looking at his pictures of his brother, which is going to be me because we have old pictures together, and just be looking at him and drinking <laughs> and uh, look at him and drinking and get the call from Carlos about, you need to be here tomorrow to do this job. <laughs> and that, that was all it was going to be. And just having him be like, you know, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't protect her. He'd be pissed. But he's pissed off, but he knows he's got to keep going. We should have at least one of those pictures be Cowboy and Lucky. And y'all's cut up on Cowboy and Lucky. We, we could do that. <laughs> What's there's that one? There one like Chris is wearing like a orange shirt. Oh yeah, dude. I got I got we got one from back when we were in Phoenix, you know. Yeah. That uh he's wearing but like I, fly shit, you know. I did, I just didn't want to make it seem so like He's not emotional. It's it's kind of almost like, God damn it, dude. Why why did you have to I wanted him to go, why did you have to go get yourself killed? And then I gotta take care of all this bullshit. Right. And now I got more shit to pile on my plate. Yeah. That's kind of where I wanted to go yeah. after you told me that. Because then it doesn't leave them he's gotta he ain't got time to mourn. Pack your shit up. Go. You gotta kill more people. Yeah. And that was gonna lead it lead into the next day. So that was going to be my out. That's great. You build up, you build up, you build up, you have that emotion, third act, you're done. Yeah. And then Easy. you could bring in that one that we talked about towards the end. Yeah, if you wanted to have an emotional scene between him and Pops, either about this brother character or about uh, the, the niece, but whatever. But that's the third act. Yeah, correct? That, whatever it is, you can have that, that scene. I just wanted to have it at this act, that it's just a – he just killed somebody. He does not have time to mourn. He's like, son of a bitch. He gets a call, and he's like, don't forget, tomorrow, here's the address. And he's like, yeah, I know where it's at. And then he's, he's back into killing. Yeah. So he has no time. Would we'll save Pops for page 60, 65 Plus, I mean, or 70. What's really important is I always remember your – I mean, if we were trying to make some Oscar movie, we would have to be – this is all be a completely different conversation. Well, of course. So, I mean, we're you're trying to make a piece of, you know, a shoot 'em up entertainment that, that people just want to watch killing and stuff. Yeah. So you got to like cater to the audience. So it, you don't need he don't need to to give his life to Jesus or anything. We just need a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? He don't have to have a major, <laughs> profound switch or anything. Yeah. I'm, it's just I, a little I was bit. watching. I kept pulling up on YouTube, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the good, the bad, the ugly, the good, the bad, just watching scenes 
and going, he's Clint Eastwood here, and he's got one job. Yeah. And it's basically that. You're following Clint Eastwood. We're still following Roy. We're le- The last thing you see before you see the trailer house is the guy dragging, you know, dead. And the next scene is I'm about to just go, God dang it, why am I into all this crap? And then I get a call to go, don't forget to be here tomorrow. Big deal going down. You know, That'd be good. I just, be thought, I just thought of this. You might like this. It might work for you. What if you just do a first blood, the first first blood, the first random, and the whole movie is just fighting, fighting, killing, 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 killing. And just wait till that very last. Burst. Does it have the last scene of first blood is, is the emotional outburst? Yeah, that's a good idea. That really is. So what if Don't there ain't that scene of or you have a scene where he looks at the brother and he's like, God oh, damn, you know, there's not the, no major thing said or done. Just like, I can't believe this. And then whatever that, that conversation with, with Pops be the end of the movie. Absolutely. That might that that might work even better because I kind of like what he's learned on his journey type deal. Yeah, that might work even better because basically what's happening is is he's fixing to have two – he's got two rival leaders, you know. He yeah. did this, and now he's got – so he could play both sides. Yeah, he ain't got time to whine. Yeah, I, I, you don't have any kind of a emotional shift or he's learned a lesson or he regrets anything. All that is like the end, end of the movie. It's just a killing fest until the end, end, end of the movie. Okay. That, like that, that. solves a lot of your problems. You don't have problems, you know what I mean? You ain't got to worry about it. You just keep killing mother. <laughs> Sorry. You keep killing people. <laughs> till, <laughs> I believe that. You just keep killing people to the end. No, that's what we have to do. That's, that's, that's what we have to do. That, that, that allows him just to keep going. He's a machine. He's a machine. So, Yeah. That I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I'm gonna do. I had all this. I had all the other action laid out, and then I was like, "God dang it, man! How do I get to the?" Because the one scene's got a little funny in it, and I'm like, "I don't want to bring the comedy right here in the middle after he just, you know, that needs to that needs to work its way down after he's done another job. Like he just can't get out of the washing machine. It keeps spinning him around and around." Like, guys, like, every time I'm out, they pull me back in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you, did you see? What was I gonna say? I just was fixing to say it. Uh-huh. Dang it! All right, I forgot. It was gonna be something good, but I forgot. <laughs> It was a movie. It was a movie. I just watched the trailer. Oh, trailer. Oh, the Mel Gibson Santa Claus deal. Oh, no, I sent you that. Fat Man. I think that's going to be good. Oh. Um, that is super dark. I haven't really seen any. Tra- oh, I, I know. Have you seen the Bruce Willis Die Hard Battery commercial? You, I, I haven't found it on YouTube. I saw it on, on during, it was during one of the football games they played it this Sunday. It's, it, it's Die Hard Battery that Sears is making. It's coming back to like. I don't know some auto parts store, and they did a it's a it's a it's a long commercial. So like they made a little mini Die Hard movie with Bruce Willis trying to get a battery, and he keeps fighting, had to crawl through gutters and chasing and limo. The limo driver, the first movie, picks him up, and then uh, the bad guy that was on Walker, or uh, he was a That's good guy right. on Walker, but he was uh, the bad guy Donald, the black guy. What's his name? Uh, Trivet. Yeah, there it is right here. He's yeah, he's like one of the bad guys chasing him and. Uh, it's long. It's like a. It's a several minute uh, commercial. It's uh for Die Hard batteries. Yeah, and they're, they're was blowing a, stuff up. They're killing and everything. It's like a little action movie. It's two minutes. Yeah, it's a long commercial. All right, I'm all, I'm gonna watch it after this. Watch it after the after the deal. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's like they made out. Uh, I, let me say this: I like Bruce Willis. I always have. I still do. But that's probably the most physical he's been. <laughs> you, every movie you watch, you can tell it's like he ain't doing nothing. He's just no, there. especially after the Expendables, he was like, "I'm just gonna stand there and talk." Yeah. Now he he did a few, but he just ain't doing nothing. Did you see the one where it was glass? 
Did you see Glass? No. It was. But uh, you told me about it, where he just sat there and talked the whole time. He just sits there, and then he don't hardly say anything. And then in the action, the scene, you know, his character has that like that hoodie and raincoat or whatever. You, they just shoot him from behind, and all you ever see is this close up. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you see him from behind. So it's a, it's a stunt double with the the raincoat on. It's like Chris Willis. <laughs> I don't know if he's injured or if he's just lazy. I don't know what it is. He just ain't doing it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it after this. Uh, we'll try to get this up here in a little bit or tomorrow. Uh, it's almost seven. Let's just not, do it tomorrow. Not, yeah, I'll get up tomorrow morning. I might get all ready and post the first thing in the morning. How is the, uh, how's the novel? Where are we at? I'm killing it. That's what I'm going to do after we get off the – off the deal. That's all I do other than work. What do you think in your, are you writing till you just can't figure it out or do you know where you're going? I, I wrote kind of an outline, but it's, it shifts as it goes because some things work, some things don't. Uh, but yeah, I know, I know pretty well where I'm going. And like, what I do is when I finish a chapter, you know how you and I both kind of daydream and work stuff out. I just yeah. in bed as I'm going to sleep. I just think what the next chapter and how I want to get there. And what? I write that. What is the difference in writing a novel and a script where we would go Hoke and he says this and Russell and he says this? You don't have that in a novel. The scripts are a million times easier. I'll tell you that right now because I ain't got to worry about. It. I just show you through action what they're doing. Yeah, I, I don't. You don't. And then the, the big thing with novel writing is you're supposed to show, not tell. So, and then, for instance, if I'm telling, it's like uh, Russell walked into the kitchen. That's telling. But yeah. the novel you want to show, that's how I write the script. Russell enters the kitchen, grabs a, right. grabs a glass of water. In a novel, I go, Russell just woke. Russell's still feeling the beat down from last night's drinking. Th- dying of thirst, he walked into the kitchen and grabbed the nearest cup and and. and Pour the, the uh, tall glass of life-saving liquid to soothe his headache. I mean, it's you know, all wordy, and you kind of show it, and then really like describe the feel. Yeah, but you can't them. you can't just tell them. The reader wants to the reader wants to get involved with the character. yeah. You got to draw them in with the they want to walk they want to walk through the house with them. Yeah, a screenplay is in some regard like a blueprint. Yep. And all I got to do is Russell walks in hungover. That's all I got to say in the script. In a, in a novel, I got to write all the other How I got there, yeah. He stumbles into the kitchen after a hard night of drinking, it's, yeah. It's way easier to write a screenplay, but it's way easier to get a novel out there. And done. I mean – Oh, absolutely. The, 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 the move, this novel, to be a movie, is, would be a $200 million movie. <laughs> so I don't want to die because I didn't have a budget to make a, a Red Sea movie of it. So I'm gonna write the novel and then go from there, self-publish it, and things like that, and see what happens. And it's one of those deals. It, it, I think you're kind of this way with the movie thing. If it picks up and it's a great hit, and I'm uh, the next best thing is a slide bread, that's awesome. That's great. But yeah. if I just get it out there and it's out of my brain and on paper. Then you're, oh, oh my God, it, that's even better. That's fine too. That's where I'm at with Roy. I just want to get him. I know where he's at and where he's going. Yeah. I got no expectation. And uh, get him out and get him, you know, to kill him. That's all. The one thing I will say, the one thing I'll say that that this novel's teaching me that I haven't necessarily always done with screenwriting is this. If it ain't working, ditch it. Don't try and force it. Don't find yeah, don't fight it. So I for I'll give you for instance. There's a scene where she comes across this uh bur- burned up oil uh oil, oil rig thing. And she's blood everywhere, but there's no bodies. And so, I, by my mind, I was like, okay, it was a staged event. They're, they didn't really kill anybody. It was staged, and they're trying to, like, trick some people. Dude, the ripple effect of having to see that through caused so many problems. I went back <laughs> and rewrote it where she found bodies. And they, that way you didn't have to worry about it, yeah. There was, it was way easier and more self-contained if they just went ahead and really did kill people at this oil rig. 
And then I then I, now, now other stuff I just went back and I just deleted and I made it like it was so. Much I will fun. I will say that it seems like when we wrote our scripts, we always wrote for what we were of had capable or had available to us, what yeah, we right. were capable of. And now you're able to write. You know, the old Derek explodes and yeah. she flies out of there, and we don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about like. Bitch, how are we going to pull that off? Yeah, I got CGI robots, and I've got, you know, I've got a whole character that's a flipping robot. I mean. Yeah. How are we going to pull that off? Wrap Gary in tinfoil? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be, yeah, it'd be uh, <laughs> Gary in the box in tinfoil. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm tennis to get up. Amy to your leader. <laughs> it'd be like that. Which, by the and way, Gary working at a strip club. We need, uh, to, we need to capitalize on that somehow. Dude, I know it. I'm thinking about uh, Roy will end up there somehow. It'd be funny if that same stripper that's a wounded still there. It probably is. Yeah. That was not good. She wouldn't get I saw that the other day. Camera. Yeah, isn't that something? She no, I don't want to do that. And you're like, really? You're a stripper. You're, you're a stripper. That's what you do. Yeah. And, you're, and at least you're going to make, you're getting paid to do it on the, I mean, come on. I don't, I don't even know we paid her. I don't remember. I think y'all did 50 bucks. Maybe. I think well, Chris might have did it. There so, were a few things Chris took care of. That might have been one of them. I didn't know part of that. So, all right. Well, we'll uh, we'll try to do this. We're, I mean, we don't want to be Joe Rogan and Spotify start censoring him and taking him off. <laughs> so, you saw that, right? Pay him $100 million and then start telling him he can't do stuff. Whether well, they actually censor him and then they're talking about it, did they actually do it? They pulled off a bunch of shows. They took off a bunch of shows with – Characters that were, yeah, not there. They're not what people. they thought. Yeah, I knew that the Alex Jones show was missing at one point, and there's that that guy who was, uh, he was like this real extreme right wing guy, and it turned out he ended up he was had did something was involved with like a child molestation thing, and then I don't know, then he got he got pay him a hundred million dollars a century. I'd be like, hey, whatever, dude, you yeah. got a hundred million dollars. I ain't worried about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he even moved to Texas to save all that money. So yeah, lives in Austin. All he's got to do is just sit his ass in the studio and talk. Yeah, yeah. he ain't got to worry about it now. That's yeah, done. That's where ours is going. You guys wait. Yeah, this might be the seventh one, eighth one, or ninth one, but you just wait when we get to a hundred. <laughs> well, I think it's hilarious, and I don't know if people believe us or not. This we're just recording what we were going to say anyway. Yeah, this is just like us making the phone call. This conversation this is, is literally zero difference. Yeah. I I think – who said it? Was it Fred or somebody? He was like, man, I like watching the podcast because they've been on set with us to see how we – this is basically what we do. Yeah. Now, we don't talk football. Well, sometimes we do. It just depends yeah. on what – but around, we. Yeah. this is basically what we do. The only difference on set would be me and you going, all right, uh – I'm going to go over here and get this set up. You go talk to those guys. I don't want to talk to the actors. Will you do that? You go like, yeah, I'm not going to go over here. You know, will you just get that fight scene done? Yeah. You know, that's basically how it works. Yeah. It's so easy. But, uh, all right, well, let's, uh, we'll wrap it up with good luck on Sunday. Yeah. Who the Cowboys got next? Uh, I think Midway Junior High, so it's going to be a close game. <laughs> Let me see here. I got it right here. Hang on. Titans have got undefeated Steelers versus undefeated Titans. Oh, that's going to be a good game. Is that I Monday? It's, it's, no, it's Sunday uh, noon, and it's the one that got moved. It was the COVID mm. game. 24th, and, uh, that's right. Cowboys are at the football team. Oh. I can't say the other word anymore. They can. It's the Washington Red Scums. Scums. Yeah, they're at, the, they're at the football team. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm kind of pull for the football team. Me too. Because one, I kind of like think the name is funny. And two, I'm, I mean, the Cowboys ain't going to do nothing anyway. It'd be nice to see that coach with cancer kind of get something going. Yeah, no doubt. And I like uh, I like their numbers on the side of the helmets instead of the, the yeah, chief. I like that's cool. That's cool. That's kind of that old, uh, old school college. I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I wish they would just keep it. Football team and keep that. Game. Yeah, just keep it. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty. I cool. like it. So, all right. Well, uh, holler at me. I'm sure we'll text and everything. But uh, right. good luck. 
Good luck Sunday. Like you're the general manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My shoulder's a little sore, but I think I can pull that. <laughs> All right. Can you imagine, I want to watch the, uh, can you imagine yeah. a real person like you or me or just some Joe on the street on that field with those, with those guys? It's yeah. almost worth seeing just once just to see you know how bad that would hurt. I want to see that just once just to see it happen. That it would be you would be you would be destroyed. Yeah. Like I'd rather be like, hey, you want to get hit by this truck or this or uh like, this outside linebacker. Like the no, commercial the where truck. James Harrison don't get paid till he hits the guy. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> how it is. Why he stops <laughs> in the middle of the yard, I don't know. Keep running, dude. You are out you're out the other house. <laughs> yeah, <that's awesome. laughs> All right. Uh I'll holler at you. All right, later. Bye.